So uh, the phone really hasn't been improved all that much since I got my uh, AT&T phone in the 1970s, you know, with a dialer. <laughs> you kids don't remember that, do you? Uh, but really, the, the phone on an Android phone or, not, or an iPhone really hasn't changed all that much since those times. I mean, we have number pad now, but not much has changed. But Sidecar is uh, trying to come out with some new things to do with phones, uh, and we're going to hear about that right now. Who are you? I'm Rob Williams. I'm the CEO of Sidecar. Uh, we're a company that's launching a new product um, that's really looking at how to reimagine the phone call now that we all have smartphones. The call really hasn't changed since we had uh, regular phones and even and, uh, then uh, feature phones. But now that we all have smartphones, we think that you should be able to use all of the capabilities of that device in your calling experience. And what does that mean? Because you know, most people think of a phone call, you enter a number or you hit a name on your contact list and you have to call somebody. What, what other kinds of capabilities are possible now that we have smartphones? Sure, well, we asked the same question. When we realized that the, the phone icon was an area where there really hadn't been a lot of innovation yet, we said, well, you should be able to use all the capabilities of the device in a calling experience. Um, but what, what, thi what things would most appeal to people? And so we went out and asked people, and we had, we're all geeks, we're all engineers, so we had some crazy ideas. Maybe people would like to work on, collaborate on documents together or browse the web together. But it turned out, no, they wanted to share photos, they wanted to share contacts, they wanted to show their friends where they were, they wanted to figure out um, how to meet it somewhere, choose a location. It was really simple things that they could do really, really easily. And so when I call you on a sidecar, is it using the Verizon network the, the, or the phone network, the cell phone sure. towers, or is it using something else? It does use the, the cellular network or your Wi-Fi network, but it runs on the data portion of the network. So okay. rather than being siloed on the circuit switch voice side of the network, we're bringing the voice call across the data side of things. And every time we've seen technologies move from the silos of being analog or circuit switched onto the IP plane, they've not the same experiences, but integrated with everything else that's available to them. So that's what we're, we're seeing as we move voice from circuit switched onto data. So I have a feeling that calling somebody in Israel or in Mexico or I India is going to be cheaper doing this, right? The same way a lot of the free phones have come out for iPhones to, to let you call over the IP networks, right. which means you're not using the, uh, sure. the long distance rates, <laughs> right? Sure, that's one appeal of all of these applications in this, in this larger space is they let you call for free from any location in the world to anywhere else in the world as long as both people have the application. And this is good, especially in Europe. If you're on Wi-Fi in Europe, you know, if you're roaming, if you're outside, mm -hmm. you're, like for me that's Europe or uh, China, I'm, I'm using roaming rates which usually AT or, or Verizon or AT&T is charging me a lot per minute to roam. Right. And if I'm using a Wi-Fi in a local cafe or a Starbucks or something like that, I'm using the data network, so I'm not using those roaming rates. Totally. And calling has been, that's why these uh, calling applications generally have been more popular internationally. It's, it's very, very complicated to call from one country to another country around yeah. the world. For us in the US, often we have these huge buckets of minutes, and uh, we think calling is free. And then the first time we go to Mexico, we realize we can't call home. Yeah. And then we want an application like this. Or we're inside a building and we try and make a call and the, the network doesn't work. And so there's lots of reasons why people in the U.S. also need this sort of application. Yeah, But that's not where you end, right? You, you know, you right. Now that you're on the uh, data portion of the network, what, what else can you do? Sure, that would be really boring just to take the experience we had before and move it onto the network and call it done. Right? That you have yeah. to show innovation. You have to look at what you can do with the smartphone. And so we stepped back and said, okay, once both people have this application, now, what can you do with it? Um, and the things we found were, were really compelling experiences that used all of the capabilities of the device. So I can go onto the phone, place a sidecar to sidecar call. Um, and at that moment in time where, there's always a moment on a call where you start waving your hands, trying to describe what's around you. Yeah. That's the moment we want to help with. So, oh, rather than describing where, having to kind of describe your location or describe how cool the concert is that you're at, or that you're sitting with Robert Scoble, 
I can actually show the other person, and that's an amazing experience. And that, that's what we want to break through and accomplish. With so the you just click a button and, and you're showing video to the other person from your phone? Yeah, uh, we wanted to make it thumbable. We decided if it's a calling experience and you had to use more than your thumb, then we, then we hadn't, done, hadn't accomplished our mission, right? Yeah. What else can you do uh, with Sidecar that you can't mm -hmm. do with a normal phone? So in the Sidecar to Sidecar calling, experience, you can do four main things. So we wanted to keep it simple, get people used to this concept of call and share, um, because we use our smartphones to share. Yeah. So four things. One, see what I see, show people wh what's around me. Yeah. Two, location, quickly be able to share where you are or find a new a location on a map that you want to share with the other person. Oh, that's useful. If you're, uh, I was just with, at dinner with Leo Laporte mm -hmm. and we were at a restaurant, we were waiting for the other half of the party to come. Mm -hmm. We could have called them up and said, here's the location, and yep. they could have seen that and walked toward us as they were right. talking to us. Yeah, and it's surprisingly difficult to do that in an interactive and easy fashion. So we worked yep. really hard to make that simple to do. Okay. Three, share photos. It turns out that you, that's actually something that's very hard for people to do when they're on a calling experience today with the average phone. Some of us know how to maybe press the home button and do some magic and, and send a photo across. But if one person has a CDMA phone, well, one person is an average user, yeah. it's not going to happen. So making that easy and integrated with the rest of the experience is, is, is important and, uh, and, uh, and uh, high value to users. So what we're trying to accomplish Was there. Was the fourth thing? The fourth thing, yeah. contacts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, contact sharing is also important. That moment where you say, oh, I have his number, I'll send it to you afterwards. Being able to send it right then, make sure it actually goes through to the other person they have it and see information they needed. Yeah. That's what we deliver. And then over that, we also let people send text messages. So when you're in noisy environments showing people where they are, you can still communicate. So when you first sign on, uh, you, it asks for your con access to your contact list, right? right. And, and what does it do with that? Does it upload it to your servers or, and share it? Or what, what does we it do We do use the phone number as your identity. Uh, that is sort of the social network of the smartphone. That's how you're identified in other people's address books. Yeah. So if you're going to match people, you have to use the phone number yeah. and you have to match using the address book. But you need to do that securely. So we read the phone numbers and only the phone numbers out of the address book. We encrypt them with a one-way hash. And we send them out securely to our server. We match them across against the other people in your, in your, in your phone book so that you, you, we can tell you who else has Sidecar. Mm -hmm. And so that's pretty secure. Yeah, I was shocked actually that you didn't hook up to Facebook and because most of my phone calling now is through the Facebook address book. I actually go there first mm -hmm. because I know the phone numbers are more accurate there than in my contact list. And also my friends are in Facebook and I can uh, message them and call them from inside Facebook. Are you thinking about that at all? Well, to some extent that's a platform feature already, right? That we don't need to replicate. People are already synchronizing their contact book, their address books on their phone with their Facebook address books yeah. using the Facebook application. So that's already happened. And the same is true on Android. I think there are amazing opportunities once you start sharing content inside the communication experience to integrate with the social network. Mm -hmm. um, but the address book actually isn't necessarily one where we need to go to. Okay. So. How are you monetizing this? Because uh, it's not obvious to me <laughs> that you're making, it was a free app and uh, how are you guys going to Well, communications is still a huge business. and there's clearly a massive demand for it. If you look at the social networking cap category in the App Store around the world, about half the applications in the top 10 are communication applications. And so people want this service. Um, they want alternate ways to place calls. Yeah. And we see basically, you know, one, step one, iterate on product experience. Make sure we have something that people love. Then build up a network. The network doesn't have value until a lot of people are using the application. Yeah. And then probably start monetizing through typical channel communication services because people know how to pay for them. So premium services like a dial-in number or calling to, a, calling to India or calling to some other country. Yeah. Um, but longer term, we actually see a huge opportunity just in the ability to uh, connect local businesses, medium-sized businesses with their users in a more powerful way. Okay. So. Very cool. Um, I noticed you guys are on Android and mm -hmm. iPhone, right? You're not right. on RAM or Windows Phone or... Are you gonna? Are you looking at other platforms? Because one advantage of a system like this is having right. every <laughs> having the people on the other side be on the platform, so that you can get more utility out of it. But um, we love a lot of platforms, but as a startup CEO, I have to look at the opportunity cost of the different platforms, and there are only two platforms that are currently relevant. Yeah. So it's Android and iPhone, and there's no point in developing for anything else right now. Yeah. Um, 
but they are, uh, the two platforms are, are both great to develop for. They have their strengths and weaknesses, uh, but it's hard. On, we used to say on the internet, no one knows you're a dog. And yeah. <laughs> on, on the phone, you don't know whether you're calling someone who's an Android user or an iPhone user. So you right. have to support both platforms. Yeah. What's it like to develop for both platforms? We might get a little geeky now. <laughs> <laughs> How much so. do you want? That's a, that's a full hour long conversation. Absolutely. Um, this, this, this is a great phone to develop for because it is a great phone. Uh, yeah. Apple has iterated and iterated. They built a really solid development pla uh, platform. The audio subsystem works better than any other phone out there in VoIP mode. Uh, it has the best hardware echo cancellation. So the Apple's focus on a single device has made this a really strong platform. Um, when you release in the App Store, of course, it's like releasing a movie nationwide. It's just got to work out of the gate. And that's really, really challenging. Um, Android's fun to develop for because there's so many different form factors, so many div different devices uh, to work with. That's actually kind of fun, being able to play with the different devices and see how they work around the world. Uh, because of the platform fragmentation, you do have to get out in a, with a big beta and yeah. distribute it out to users and make sure that you're actually working on all the devices that are out there. Yeah, because there's really like 400 different devices and carriers and ROMs are different on this. There's hackers who are doing all sorts of weird stuff. Yeah. And sometimes you hit weird bugs, right? Well, especially for communications, networks are hard. So that's something you deal with. Uh, forever, but um, there has been some uh, convergence in the space, and so there are a few devices that matter. So if you yeah. focus on those devices, you can actually be very successful. Yeah. Can you walk me through uh, what it, what it would be like to call somebody, and and then w what it would look like? Sure. Uh, let's do that from this Galaxy S2 to this iPhone. Okay. Um, we'll start sidecar up. Uh, the Galaxy is on AT and T, and the uh, iPhone is on Verizon. Yep. There we go. We'll answer. There we go. We're on call between the two phones. Yep. You can hear the voice going back and forth. Yep. Um, challenging hey. network environment here. We'll yeah. tell people when they're on a poor network. So hopefully the call will stay up inside the building. Okay. It's always a uh, challenge facing calls over cellular networks inside buildings. Yep. I have sidecar to iPhone here, and we're talking away. We can hear a little echo in the room as you can hear the voices on both phones. The cool stuff happens when I lift one phone up and say, hey, I'm on a call with Robert Scoble. And I can swipe with my fist, my, my finger the, the rotor here. Yep. And on the other side, it'll tell me, ask me whether I want to see, see what I see. You get a voice message in your ear, because at that point, you probably didn't see the dialogue. And then you can send video from one phone to the other. Very cool. It's awesome. Um, what else do I need to know? W tell me a little bit about your company. How was it funded? Sure. Uh, we actually started the company as Socialized two years ago, funded by Robert, uh, Rob Glazer and uh, Ignition Ventures. And we launched Socialized last year um, as really a video product that meets, uh, this was integrated with Facebook. And we really wanted to that make that work on the web and mobile. Uh, we found it was really challenging to build a great web and mobile product. Yeah. And so decided. If you're going to be one or the other, we'd rather do communications on mobile. Yep. And so we pivoted and started building Sidecar about a year ago, which is what we launched yesterday. The company is uh, 10 people, almost all engineers, uh, six in San Francisco and four in Seattle. Very cool. And it, that explains the uh, technology, because there were some former NetMeeting guys on here. You know, people <laughs> well, who have been doing pe yeah, yeah, people who've done uh, uh, communication and packet communication for a long time. Yeah, a lot of mobile. Uh, skills yeah. in the team, which is, and it's a, it's a challenging space, so you do definitely need that experience. Yeah. Well, cool. Where do we get it? Uh, it's available on the Android Marketplace, the Play which is now store. the Google Play Store, yeah. which doesn't exactly roll off the tongue, and uh, in the iTunes App Store. And you search for uh, Sidecar? Sidecar or sidecar.me uh, should be easy to find. Very cool. Thanks Great. for coming Thanks out and showing it to me. Appreciate it.